Good evening, everyone, and happy Sunday to you. Josh is severe weather. We now have a potential tropical storm forming off the southeast coast. The next name on the list is Helene, and tropical storm warnings are in effect as we have Hurricane Hunter aircraft getting into the storm right now, measuring it, but it is freeing itself up from the front, becoming tropical, and I do expect it will be a tropical storm at some point here tonight with landfall later tomorrow. Uh, across the Carolina coastline. Uh, advisories are just coming in. I'm getting them hot off the press as I record this video. It's about five o'clock Eastern, so I'm gonna get kind of jump around a little bit, but I do wanna talk about impacts and also what's to come across the rest of the tropics. Uh, here we have a tropical storm warning in effect from Edisto Beach, South Carolina, uh, to Ocracoke in North Carolina. Good chunk of the coastline here uh, from this area all the way up to Ocracoke is under that tropical storm warning. Uh, right now, we've got a storm center beginning to take shape here. I believe personally it's already a tropical storm, but aircraft are in there taking a look at it, and I'm going to break down as this data comes in what exactly is going on. Here is the forecast track right now of potential tropical cyclone 8, uh, likely to be a tropical storm by midnight with 45 to 50 miles per hour winds as it approaches the coast here later in the afternoon tomorrow with landfall expected somewhere near Georgetown, South Carolina, but possibly as far north as North Myrtle Beach or as far south as Charleston. After that, the storm will weaken, but it will bring heavy amounts of rainfall inland into the Carolinas tonight and tomorrow, and then eventually into the Western Carolinas, Virginia and West Virginia, uh, by the time we get to late tomorrow night into the day on Tuesday. I'm gonna break that down in a little bit. We also have Gordon, which is weakened to a tropical depression, dealing with a lot of wind shear over the central Atlantic. Uh, Ileana is weakened as well to a remnant low over the Gulf of California. Uh, just a tiny swirl, but you can see moisture spreading inland into the Four Corners region. And in the Western Pacific, things are very busy with a typhoon approaching landfall in Shanghai, China. That is Typhoon Babinka with winds of 80 miles per hour landfall expected here in the next few hours. Here's a look at our ocean water, still very warm. That is certainly not holding back the storm development. Other features are such as subsidence, that's sinking air. We've had a lot of that across the tropical basin, although breaks in it have allowed storms like Francine last week to form and now likely Helene to form here. And I do think we could have another storm next week. Uh, that is the week of the 23rd across the Western Caribbean, perhaps a threat to Florida down the road. I'm gonna talk about that in future videos, but we'll take a quick peek at it today as well. Here's a look at potential tropical cyclone eight and honestly i think it is a tropical storm at this point it will probably get that name at some point in the next six to 12 hours here it is spinning off the carolina coast moving northwestward into south carolina and north carolina here tonight and tomorrow uh, the rest of the u.s is relatively quiet we do have some locally heavier showers and storms across the gulf coast region a bit of a trough in here uh, the moisture left over from Francine is advancing along the Gulf Coast into Florida and the Bahamas. And we also have some heavier rain over portions of South Texas and Mexico. Big trough across the western United States. Uh, that is drawing the moisture from leftover remnants of Ileana into the southwest over the next few days. And that could lead us to some more active weather in the next couple of days across the north central U.S. and the central plains as well. But high and dry across the northeast, big block in place. It's very warm in Ohio and West Virginia. We need rain badly, and we're not seeing much of it here with the pattern that we're stuck in. Across the remainder of the tropics, you can see uh, this is future Helene. This is a front that it has broken itself away from, which extends well out across the northern Atlantic near the Azores already back to near Bermuda and that front is basically dissolved here with our low pressure forming. This is tropical depression Gordon right here over the central Atlantic expected to move away and get picked up by this front. We do have waves coming across uh, Africa and the main development region but very unfavorable conditions for development and quiet across the Caribbean a few showers moving through the windward islands and a couple of heavier showers and storms across Hispaniola, Cuba, the Bahamas, and Jamaica. But overall, it's been a very dry uh, September across this region uh, with the lack of tropical activity that may change as we head into a more favorable phase here in about eight to nine days. Here's a closer look at the Western Atlantic, quiet across Canada, quiet across the Northeast and Eastern Great Lakes. Here is future Helene, and uh, I will circle Bermuda for you guys right here. 
Uh, we may see another low pressure feature form here along this front, but nothing expected to get a name. And wind shear is going to create that uh, divergence here and bring thunderstorms eastward and also ventilate Helene westward here from this boundary here. So uh, overall, not a terrible look, but obviously we've got uh, something that I've been talking about since the middle of last week. Uh, forming here and you can see on our satellite pretty intense rain pretty intense thunderstorms as I pull up the radar here from the Carolinas and zoom in you can kind of see what's going on under the hood here this is the circulation of future Helene lots of showers and thunderstorms we definitely have the twist on radar here you can kind of see where that low pressure is formed and uh, winds that, the, that have been measured in this storm have been well to tropical storm force. The heavy bands of rain are going to be out ahead of it, spreading on the Carolina and Curie beaches, uh, Bald Head Island. We're going to eventually see some heavier rain uh, advancing into parts of the Grand Strand of South Carolina and scattered showers well north and west. We've had some of those here in the Raleigh area this afternoon. Uh, but overall, this storm is going to be tracking, generally speaking, in this direction. And this big canopy of rain is going to advance pretty quickly northwest during the day tomorrow. Uh, heavy rain should spread onto the South Carolina coast here later tonight. It's already coming down really hard uh, in the Wilmington area and all the way down the Bald Head Island and Oak Island and, and Southport. That area of rain could produce some pretty uh, significant amounts here over the next several hours as this storm center continues to form and develop here. On the visible satellite here, before it gets dark, you can certainly see uh, there is a circulation here, uh, lots of thunderstorm canopies breaking out uh, from this, uh, just a very deep convection here. And that's allowed something that was, wasn't even low pressure when we started the day this morning to quickly spin up uh, over the very warm waters of the Gulf Stream in here. The wind shear is pretty low, so it is a favorable environment for intensification. As a result, uh, we are seeing some intense winds near the center and a tropical structure forming. This is the aircraft that is currently flying through the storm as of 5 o'clock. And if you take a look at some of the wind data they've gathered, there's actually been some stronger winds here. Flight level winds of 65 knots, which is about 75 miles per hour. Now near the ground, it's not that strong. Uh, minimum pressure, though, has not dropped significantly yet. It's down to about 1,006, 1,007. And as a result, we have some pretty strong wind gusts near the center here of 50 to 60 miles per hour. Officially from the National Hurricane Center, uh, the wind speed is 45 miles per hour with a pressure of 1,006 millibars. And if you pull up the track here, you'll see this has just come in uh, that the wind field is growing significantly and reaching the coast right now. So we are seeing tropical storm force winds uh, over portions like Bald Head Island and right near the South Carolina coast. The good news about this system as it forms here into a tropical storm tonight, uh, it is going to run out of real estate to develop much further. It's going to be making landfall here tomorrow afternoon crossing the South Carolina coast and a remnant low by the time we get to tomorrow night with moisture spreading eventually up uh, into places like uh, southwestern Virginia, West Virginia, maybe even far eastern Kentucky and uh, portions of the mid uh, Ohio River Valley of West Virginia and Ohio here over the next couple of days. Uh, so right now is the time to prepare if you're on the coast. Honestly, you should have been preparing now. It's already moving on shore. I've talked about it since Wednesday, but of course these systems can uh, pop up very quickly. Model guidance, in my opinion, is pretty useless. You can see, generally speaking, the landfall point here in less than 24 hours, which would be 2 p.m. Monday. After that, generally speaking, the storm goes here and basically fades. You've got some solutions that are over here and over here, but at that point, we're not really going to have a defined low pressure system, so it's just kind of guessing at what's going on. This is the HAVS tropical model, and you can see the pressure is going to drop. And in fact, it is showing a, a minimum central pressure of 993 millibars, which would be strong tropical storm strength here uh, by 8 in the morning tomorrow morning. In fact, it's showing maximum winds to hurricane intensity. Does that actually happen? If it does, and I think it's going to be a small chance, fortunately, it looks like those winds are super concentrated right over water. And by the time this system makes its way towards landfall here late tomorrow afternoon, it will actually start to weaken some. It moves out of the Gulf Stream. It starts to interact with land. And you can see the structure of it isn't exactly what you would call uh, a healthy one. It's a kind of a blob that's getting together but running out of time to do much. And by tomorrow night, the pressure drops down uh, or drops or just rises, the winds drop, the pressure rises about well above 1,000 millibars uh, with the low pressure center moving towards Charlotte here on Tuesday morning as a weakened system. Here's a NAM model uh, showing the deepening of our low pressure tonight, tropical storm for sure, landfall near Georgetown here. Uh, the time frame of this landfall looks like it's going to be about 2 or 3 o'clock in the afternoon. 
but most of the rain is going to be well north of it. So you're going to get your rain and your wind before the low comes on shore tonight into tomorrow. And you can see that heavier rain continues to advance up into places like the PD River Basin, the Midlands of South Carolina, uh, into the Charlotte metro area, some heavier bands of rain, maybe some gusty winds affecting the coastline here. Uh, places like Pender County in North Carolina, as well as up towards Emerald Isle and all the way towards Ocracoke here. And a lot of that's going to be during the day tomorrow. And we'll see these bands of showers advancing well north and west into Virginia here later tomorrow into tomorrow night, western North Carolina, far eastern Tennessee. And we may actually get some needed rain in some areas here in West Virginia and in the eastern part of West Virginia and into the Shenandoah Valley here by Tuesday. It's not going to be a ton of rain, but it will be some, and every little bit can help at this point. It's been very dry. Here's our wind forecast model, and again, because it's a forming storm, this is kind of all over the place, but you can see there will be the potential tomorrow afternoon for winds to gust past 60 miles per hour, which could cause some power outages and a little bit of damage here. It's not going to be another Francine, probably not going to be as strong as Ophelia was, <laughs> was last year, uh, but it does have some potential growth to it still before it comes in into uh, land here tomorrow afternoon. Uh, I will learn to talk, I promise. Uh, and wind gusts could even go past 40 to 50 miles per hour well inland in places like Fayetteville and Lumberton and Florence and Marion County here in South Carolina. But by tomorrow night, this is uh, in large just a rainstorm with some locally gusty winds after that. Here's the rain potential. These are the blend of all the models that run here. Uh, and you can see numbers totaling up to five to six inches along the coastline here. Uh, Pender, Onslow counties especially could see the heaviest rain. But even Myrtle and Wilmington could see four to five inches of rain locally more at the coast. Inland areas are probably looking at a couple of inches of rain. Now, we got a couple of them very quickly in Raleigh the other day on Friday. So we could see that again here tomorrow. Most of that rain coming late tonight, tomorrow into tomorrow night and then letting up as we get to Tuesday in places like Raleigh, Charlotte a little bit later. Uh, but we could see some significant rains all the way up into places like Lynchburg, Virginia, uh, Charlottesville, Harrisonburg, maybe all the way up to Winchester, uh, as well as Fauquier parts, uh, Fauquier County and, and uh, Warren County, Warrenton, those areas here in uh, Northern Virginia, maybe Culpeper County as well. But uh, not a huge soaking here, just one that's going to help us a little bit. Pennsylvania, West Virginia, Ohio, I am... Not as enthusiastic about the amounts of rain, but this moisture is going to make its way your way as well. Uh, New England's probably not going to see too much. We may see some lighter amounts near the coast here, but not a huge rainstorm for the East Coast. Mainly just a, a soaking for the Carolinas and maybe if we're lucky, parts of Virginia and West Virginia and maybe far eastern Tennessee. But that's about what we're looking at with this system. We'll talk about Gordon real quick here. The center is actually out here in the central Atlantic. All the thunderstorm convection displaced to the east by strong wind shear. Uh, we have some waves coming in underneath, but nothing super exciting at this point. Take a look at this massive area of subsidence. This is sinking stable air, uh, which is keeping things at bay here just north of the main development region. Here's Gordon, and again, it's weakened to a tropical depression. It may survive, but it's got several days of wind shear and dry air to deal with before maybe a potential comeback comes here towards the end of next week. Here's the low-level center right here, kind of a naked swirl. Here's all the strong winds and thunderstorm activity. And yes, it's a tropical depression, but a very messy one. So Gordon's kind of a hot mess here. You can see it'll be slowing down, drifting westward to the middle of the week. And then as it gains latitude and turns away, it does have a chance of re-strengthening back to a tropical storm Thursday into Friday. Uh, behind this system, the Atlantic is quiet for a few days, but notice how we get to the weekend and early next week, Models are indicating some juicy weather here across the Caribbean, Central America, and maybe close to the Bahamas and Florida. This is going to be an area we do need to watch here for potential tropical development. Uh, not the western and northern Gulf, so Louisiana and Texas, you can breathe easy at this point. But if you're in Florida, this is a pattern we need to be watching here. A bit of a gyre here uh, circulating across this region here could spin a system up, and there's going to be a huge area of high pressure here keeping things at bay. There's going to be a big area of high in here. And here's the area we need to be watching, in my opinion, the Northwest Caribbean, Cuba, uh, Bahamas, Florida, and maybe up the East Coast here towards next week. It's a ways off, but models are starting to show some development here. This would be Helene. The next one would be Isaac. And we all know in Florida, eyes have not been super friendly to us historically. You know, think about Ian and Ivan and Irma and Isabel and all of these storms. Um, they have been a problem for the East Coast because traditionally that's when we get to the eyes in the alphabet. Well, here's a look at next week, and you can see the European AI showing some development near Cuba. 
towards next Tuesday and Wednesday. So it's about nine or 10 days away. Still too soon to make any calls. But generally speaking, the European indicates there'll be something coming across Florida. Uh, it's not the only model. The Canadian's been showing development as well towards a longer part of it. But you can see development near the Cayman Islands here next weekend. And then a storm getting pulled towards the Keys in South Florida around the 24th and 25th. And again, this is one model. Don't get too excited about it. But obviously something we need to start uh, preparing for is South Florida. At the very least, heavy rainfall is going to be a problem for South Florida, for Cuba, maybe Jamaica, maybe Honduras, the Yucatan, Bahamas, and certainly the Cayman Islands. Uh, wet times are ahead. Whether or not we get a strong storm is still to be determined, but something we do need to be keeping an eye on. And here's a look at what ensembles are showing here. Uh, some slow development potentially by this time next weekend or the following Monday. And we have some solutions that come up towards Florida here towards the 23rd, 24th, and 25th. So we're going to keep an eye on that. The Pacific is quieting down. Here's the remains of Ileana spinning westward here. Uh, lacking any kind of deep convection. Uh, so not much of a damaging storm, just some moisture. And then here is a storm that is going to cause damage in China. Shanghai is right here. Uh, this is Typhoon Babinka with winds of 80 to 85 miles per hour. Landfall expected here in the next couple of hours, uh, which would be lunchtime early afternoon Monday in China. And here you can see the official track. Winds are 80 miles per hour. Landfall expected just south of Shanghai. Uh, over the next couple of hours and then significant weakening as it, weakening as it moves inland. But uh, we just had Typhoon Yagi about 11, 12 days ago down in here. Now we've got another typhoon hitting China and other areas that still need to be watched as well, east of the Philippines, near Guam, which is where this system formed a few days ago, and something else over the eastern Philippine Sea. So I appreciate everybody's time. I am on the road all day tomorrow. I'll be up in Norfolk getting away from the storm. Uh, I'll drive back into it. So no video tomorrow, and I apologize. Work takes me off on the road. Uh, but we'll probably have Helene tonight. And if we do have that, I'll, of course, have updates in my community posts for you guys to see. Uh, but I think you guys know this is coming. We've talked about it for several days. Um, the next storm that could impact Florida is something I'll be taking a deeper dive into here uh, once we get rid of uh, future Helene. Uh, and because it's more than a week away, um, it's too soon to start trusting every single model. I just like to watch trends and where things may form and take a look at the uh, general overall pattern when I make forecasts like that. So I appreciate your time this evening. Hope you guys have a great rest of your weekend and please consider becoming a subscriber. As always, I thank you for your time and I am thankful for every day. It is a gift from God. I am a Christian and I give my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ all the honor and glory. Uh, it's, it's something that I know a lot of us don't do, um, especially on YouTube, um, because we, we realize the world doesn't want us to share our faith everywhere or our politics or anything else for that matter. A couple of people probably just tuned out when I said that, but I do know this, that God will continue to bless everybody who does sing his praises, um, not by conforming to what the world says, but what the Lord uh, wants us to do. In Romans 12, 2, uh, Paul tells the Roman church, do not conform to the pattern of this world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. No one here will ever be perfect. That is only God and Jesus. But God has a will for us to please him. And it's a good and pleasing and perfect will. And I, I just have to remind myself that I'm not going to conform to what everybody wants me to do worldwide. I am going to do what God wants me to do, and that is to share his good news with everybody here today and every day. I'm praying for everybody in the path of the storm, but I don't think it's going to be a huge deal, just some rain and wind. Uh, but as always, if you do have any prayer requests, I'm happy to pray for you. Those of you on the Gulf Coast still thinking about you guys here, I hope your cleanup has gone well from Francine. And I look forward to catching up with you guys again here uh, probably on Tuesday around lunchtime. See you then.